Uh, let me say good morning to my panelists. Kamal Dean Abdullah is a former national Nasara coordinator of the NPP. He's also a deputy national communications director of the party and hopefully a future MP, if you will. Um, lawyer Kwame Jantua is uh, the private legal practitioner. He is the head of the CPP's uh, Political Affairs Committee. He also works within the energy sector, does a lot of consultancy. He's here on the ticket of the CPP. And Fred Agbenyo is the uh, current deputy for international relations of the NDC, and he has eyes on the... Uh, Santo Kofi Akpafu Lipe Lolobi seat. They don't have an MP presently. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. They refuse Good morning. to give us an MP. I have not said that. I said you don't have. I'm only I stating am, facts. I'm just telling you what it is so you can state it well. Say so your viewers want to know what exactly the situation is. Mm. That the Electoral Commission and the government refuse mm. to create a constituency for us so we can also get representation in Parliament that they wrote to us on the eve of the elections, mm. saying that votes for the president, after the elections, will create a constituency for you. Mm. It'll be in over two years. Nobody's talking about it. We are also part of Ghana. <laughs> we are also paying our taxes, and mm. yet nobody's interested. All of us are quiet, and we are watching. Good governance, is it not? Fred. Yes, sir. Good morning to you. You were in power? No. Were you not in power? No. Before they came? No. You went in power? No. NDC was in power before. You mean the when the place was created? Yes. No, it was after 2019 when the regions were created. They were cut off from voters. It was a, it was a later region. creation. It was a later like, creation. From, from right. Hohoi and yeah. Boeing Before 2020 elections. It was cut so out of Hohoi and There's a gap there where the people need representation. That's right. Who is representing them now? We don't have any representation. They don't have an MP. We didn't vote at Santo all. Santo Kofi. And yes, said this the south. Yeah, the south. Yeah. They don't have an that's MP. That's right. And yeah. I thought that well, all of us why. But that's, all the, that's the responsibility of the Electoral Commission, isn't it? Surprise. They wouldn't talk to you. They wouldn't mind you. We said them letters. They don't even acknowledge it. Attorney General comments whatever they want to say to us. It, it, and it, all of us are quite as a nation. They have to vote 2024. Yeah. Why do you even have to wait for 2024? Why do we no, have I'm to wait? They have to. So Meanwhile, a letter, as I said, that. a letter was written to us wow. the day before the general elections by right. the letter on, commission on the itself, set, I remember. You know, that you could vote in the presidential the election, presidential, not the parliamentary right. elections. And nobody said that. That is why you, you need representation. Of course we Parliament. do. Of course we do. Anyway. anyway. Come on. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, my Asa brother. Assalamu to you. How are you doing? Um, Come on. How do you answer that one? Wa alaikum salam. No. What are you saying? Oh, um, uh, the, 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 the Santo Kofi and yes. Akpafu Lolobi yes. issue. Yes. Come, come on, do you want to take on the Electoral Commission's job? Oh, I am not taking on their job per se, exactly. but of course I'm also a political actor in this country. Right. And why? And I, I would have interest. Okay. Yeah. I would have interest if the constituency is, is, is created as it were. But what I do know is that I think they've, done a, they've gone a long way on it. Mm -hmm. um, the current local government minister has done some job on it. The electoral commission, I'm told, also they've done some job on it as it were. Mm -hmm. Of course, it is a right of the people to demand for um, their fair share in terms of demarcation and creation of constituency. So my brother has always been on it. When I sit on set with him always, he does that. I mean, the last time we sat on Adum TV, he was on that. I mean, apart from the fact that he wants to contest um, for that seat, um, he, he's also advocating for the people to have their fair share, as it were. So I, I think it's, it's something that is work in progress, mm -hmm. and the Electoral Commission must do the needful if the law says that create it or do it. Right. But you see, a lot goes into it. Certain times, they would have reasons why some of these things delay, okay? I'm not saying that that is a genuine reason, but if they are supposed to be given, they should be given their, 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 their fair share in terms of creating the consequency for them as it were. So for me, yes, um, it's, it's a call in the right direction, and I believe they'll work it out. But, but Johnny, I can tell you that, 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 that there's no mm. any other reason. What's the reason? You know, mm. look at how the parliament is currently. Yeah. The numbers are so close. <laughs> And so the fear is that if you create a constituency there, naturally, looking at the voting pattern from that, at that no, area that, over that, the that, years, that is, that is, NDC that will win that battle. No, please. John, John, if John, this John, thing, I, I, won I, if, if, been the same hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. If this situation had happened in anywhere in Ashanti region, mm. in the Eastern region, NPP stronghold, they would have done it long before Assumption. Now. Not assumption. Uh, that's it's that's a reality. Good, what what I said to you, as I said to you, a letter commission themselves wrote to us. Look, I have a copy of that letter. 
that saying that do. listen who says that who says go, that allow, 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 allow him to, to go to, and check the constitution always have a rebuttal. go and check the constitution we now have a district we have that's a right. dc that's right and we are entitled to have a call uh, a well, call we have a new one after the old one yes like, they, they've yeah. replaced the, 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 the old one okay you know so we are supposed to have an mp we are supposed to have a constituency and this is a job of the electoral commission no local government minister his job is to look at the district and what have you. He has done that. So with the constituency, it's an electoral commission and the attorney general. And so I'm saying that it's a deliberate thing. Mm -hmm. Assuming they have high numbers in parliament, they thought they were going to win like they did in, in the 2016 elections. And if they had done that, by now they would have created a particular constituency. Their fear today is that if you create it, you are just arming your political opponents. And that is why... They don't seem to be it interested. Be, be. But that, I don't that, think that's that. what the people are saying there. That's what he's saying. But that's what you are saying. But John, you've been there before. You yeah, interacted with people. Pay, you I've engaged the people. You heard all yeah. these things. That is on the table you for us to discuss so that we can go detail into it. Oh, it's a government issue. Oh, you're allowing him to. It's a government issue. That's why I asked you if you were taking on the EC's job. You said you are interested. I am not. No, I didn't say I was interested. They, they you boot. said you are I mean, a political person, a political actor. And I said mm -hmm. I am a of oh, why not? Yes, right. and we, he said we, you are we, interested we, in the matter. We, we, we campaign in all constituencies. Right. And for him to make these assumptions, I mean, for me, it's you just see, it's, it's just hard to be so difficult, wild. but you, you can't you, help it. Yeah. Yeah. You're a politician. You can I'm answer telling. any question at any time. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's fine. Yes. But I think but I, I think I think yes. It should be done, but um, maybe well, those allegations he's sitting here making are not It is, you have it, it is not, Johnny, it's mm -hmm. not, Johnny, it's not a question of who becomes uh, uh, the parliamentarian for that area. Mm -hmm. The question is, do the people deserve the man wants to consent to contest it. it. But never hit the man to tell his people is not in contest. That is not in contest. That they deserve a member of parliament. They deserve it. If they deserve it, then let's do what it needs to let them Because, you know, they have had representation in the past. A portion of that constituency is in Hohoi. Yes. And the other half is in the Boom Kofi Adams place. It is yeah. not, it's not okay. T region. Okay, yeah. So not not to so, so so it's 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 there. Like yeah, that. Just like that. You know. And it, they've been left. I I, I went I went to uh, we know we did an OB outside yeah. broadcast, Bella Cookie and I at Likpe. Yeah, Yeah, Likpe Mate, we were there, you know, with a whole setup, about sixty people. And we engaged them. And you could clearly tell that they are not happy about yeah, the situation. Something should be you know, done. Um, the Likpe Bakwa um, hospital is yeah. in a deplorable state. You know, uh, ordinarily, when the uh, hospital moved to Hohoi, they were expecting that this would be the district hospital and would be upgraded. But here we are. But they have a district, beautiful district office. Um, and you should give the government credit for constructing No, somebody's facility that was rented. Yeah, it's, it's, but it's but the government officer. still got it for you. No, I'm no, I heard you have never paid. They the owner will never take appreciate it whatever you do for what, them. Even what, the crucial region appreciate. that has paved the way for him to be making noise of trying to be MP because today. He will not even give, comment the president. Because it's noise. You call this not. noise? Of course. He will not comment even the, the president. Law. Telling him what they have done for him. He would not. He doesn't see. All he's interested and fixated on is to become MP. That's what he's in general. I'm sorry, okay. I'm sorry I'm saying this. That's like the All right, here. gentlemen, we have to move on. It has nothing to do with me as a person. It has all to do with a group of I'm people mm. who are Ghanaian, who are taxpayers, that they're not pleased. Stop okay. that rubbish. Gentlemen, that's that's stop that rubbish. <laughs> Gen <laughs> gentlemen, sorry, sorry. No, no, don't, don't, get, don't get angry. But you said I'm making noise. Sorry about that. I'm telling that because I'm making noise. Me and I'm telling you. Please, stop it. Sorry, sorry about that. He's a serious issue, gentlemen. He's my good friend. All he's interested in is to become MP4. Sound what is wrong with anybody having an ambition? Is what is wrong? It's not wrong. It's not so wrong. So what are you saying? But that's why he's advocating for it strongly. So that's why he's strongly advocating for it. You know the number of times that your president will be sleeping on your job. 1960. You know the number of times. Giving you a hospital like that, you are saying we're sleeping on our job. Which hospital? What is the man saying? That hospital was built around 1957. What are you saying? Well, that's an old hospital. What is the man saying? That it was equipped. Say Who's that? Come on, 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 please. Do you know, come on, 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 that these people come out. were advocating to have a region of come their out, own. Yes, come when, where was John Dramani? Come out, Dean. That hospital. Where was John Dramani? Man, when you were people after fifty years, years, they were you pushing for it. You don't even know what you are saying. Come out. Oh, I'm saying so you are just talking. How, what you how long did it take you to ask for a region? Come out. Can we proceed? Come out. Region. Come out. That, that hospital. Let me place on record that that hospital you are talking about is not a new hospital. 
It is an hospital in a dilapidated state. I remember that when I did the story, the ceilings were coming off. It it's in a bad state. Just talking, so right? as for the hospital, don't go there. It is the district assembly office. Beautiful. And I'm but sure that but, that is a but that, oh, as for that, that hospital there, I beg you, facility. don't go there. But not to pay Let's the move on, gentlemen. The Bank of Ghana yeah, says yeah. it will continue I'm to I'm increase I'm I'm the percent. policy rate <laughs> as long as inflation goes up. Yeah. And the Monetary Policy Committee hiked inflation today uh, and uh, over 24 percent Let, let's take a look at the story rising inflation struggling local currency and weak revenue performance compelled the monetary policy committee to increase the policy rates the 250 basis point hike takes the rate to the highest level in more than five years tightening of monetary policy is meant to tighten credit conditions is meant to curtail demand conditions and I think that that's the best that the central bank can contribute to the disinflation process. But the supply side issues also have to be addressed. Uh, issues of production, uh, issues of investments that would enhance the, you know, the economic capacity for the economy to grow. All of that also helps to bring inflation down. The central bank has increased the policy rate by 1,100 basis points since November in order to arrest the surge in inflation. However, the coming weeks will determine if the latest increase in rates would achieve the objective of stabilizing the city and taming inflation. For Three Business, Sunny Abdurrahman. And that's Sunny's report there. Come out. One of the key points that government has always drummed home when the conversation about uh, entrepreneurship had come up was that, oh, policy rate is low, lending rate is low, and, you know, people, and that was one of the things you used to rub in the NDC's face. Now it's shooting up, which means that borrowing will be very expensive. And the Bank of Ghana says, look, for as long as inflation keeps going up, we won't bring it down. We'll follow inflation. Uh, how did we get here? <laughs> That's very interesting. First of all, let me say good morning to you again and good morning to Jantua. Um, to my good friend. It's a long time I've seen him. Um, are you, you would, uh, is that a green book? Is it the Photoshop book or not? He <laughs> doesn't know what to say. Come on, don't yeah. invite him. No, I just wanted to know. But if, oh, okay, the green book is there. Yes. The, the, the Photoshop book. to come for the government, right? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How did we get here? Yes, sir. Simple. Globally, we are here because things are difficult for many nations. Mm. Just two days ago, I was checking the inflationary rate in Turkey, and they are now running to close to over 70% inflation. That's serious. Turkey, where our traders go, Guta, to buy stuff and come. Inflation there is around 70-something percent. That's getting serious. And not just only Turkey. I was looking at the UK. I was looking at the US. So many countries. In Africa, when I came in and looked at other countries in Africa, I said to myself, wow, this is what is happening to us. It is a global issue mm -hmm. in terms of rise, rising of uh, high prices um, of goods and services, in terms of economies trying to restructure and come on board. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bank of Ghana hiking the policy rate is a measure. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you are confronted with some of these, you know, um, tendencies, mm -hmm. what you ought to do as a central government is to find a way of, you know bringing about policies that would at least cushion the situation a bit. What can you do to fight inflation? What can you do to ensure productivity is higher? What can you do to ensure that your reserves are shored up so that you minimize the investment that you're going to put mm -hmm. in place? That all will help you fight your depreciation of your city and also help you fight the inflation as <laughs> well. So basically why we are here is to ensure that the challenge that is faced us globally mm. is at least, you know, um, um, counted head on as it were. Mm. I believe that is what has informed the central government to hike the policy rate to 24% plus. Um, yes, it also means that um, lending rates will go up. Right. Obviously, mm. interest rates is going to go up. That's right. Just as inflation has gone up as it were. And that would be quite a disincentive mm. to people who are willing or businessmen who are willing to borrow and move out mm. um, I mean uh, for, for importation and all that you don't forget we are an import-based economy right. and people go to the banks 
to either borrow money to clear their goods mm -hmm. or to borrow money to mm -hmm. other goods and services as it were. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a more reason why we need to restructure our mm -hmm. entire economy as a people. In this case, I'm not just looking at the central bank. I'm looking at my contribution, Mr. Jantua's contribution, Fred Agbanyo's contribution, your contribution. You are just patronizing so now, mm. and I'm happy about it. That's a local industry. Assuming the fabric so now is getting is from Ghana. Assuming everything, because what you are wearing is weaved in Ghana, it's weaved up north. That's right. Okay? And I see them do it. This, our young ladies are all out there weaving it. And after they weave it, so now and co will take it and, of course, try to get some, you know, clothing out of it as it were. Assuming all of us, let's say over 33 percent, I mean 33 million people in Ghana say that, look, we are going <coughs> to ensure that everything we wear is local. Mm. Let's even see all of us do that. I was in Mauritania and almost everybody I see is wearing something that is akin to their culture. That is similarly what they have. Even the president is wearing the same thing. All of them. You, but, you know the so difference. why can't we do it? That's a, it's this attitude, my brother. It starts, that's it starts from the top. Uh, no, no, no. You see, that is where I disagree and I depart with you. But you mentioned the, the president will of tell you, The top will tell you, let's do X, Y, Z. The next moment we say we are running a free market economy. You can't tell me what to do. Mm. That is our nature. We have adopted a structure for ourselves. And that is a dangerous structure. But the structure. top hasn't changed its taste. How do you expect I, the people down there I to am change saying, their I am saying that is why I said everybody is involved. Mm. And I gave example of Mauritania, where I said even from the president to everybody, mm. I see them wearing what is... You wouldn't even know the difference. Who is the president? Who is the big man? Mm. Everybody's wearing this boo -boo, some blue boo, boo like that. All of them. But that's okay? what I'm saying, that it starts I, from the top. Hey, let's see. The very I, top. I know where you're coming from, but I'm saying, I'm not also saying that the I top from is out. I am not saying the top is out of it. <laughs> I am saying all of us would have to ensure that at least, it's not just about clothing, it's about the trying as much as possible to change our taste. Mm. Okay? Why? I've always sat here to say that, look, look at the rice we import. Look at the basmati that we want to have on our, you know, dining tables at homes. Mm. When we don't even grow basmati here. The, the jasmines that we, we have. We even we if we, we, even, we even if we do, do we consume the local basmati or we consume the imported it basmati? It starts from the do top you know again. Why? Okay? It starts you know from why? the top we do, again. We do, 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 like do we do we Why? That benchmark uh, duty values, thing, values you mm -hmm. 43 items. It's competing with Ghana's basmati. So they can't compete. See? The Indians bring it in and yeah. they're competing. The price is much lower than what we are producing. That is a problem. And I'm saying that. And whose fault is it? The fault is simple. I'm saying, me, I've always mentioned it. Let us try as much as possible to look at certain policies. For example, if we say by 2022, we need to go local production of rice, nothing stops us from banning it outside. And the fear is that we're going to have shortage of food in the system mm. if we ban it. That's the fear. I disagree. Because frankly, until recently, the rice is almost becoming our staple. Rice wasn't our staple. Okay, mm. those days when some houses were there, they could even go one year without cooking rice in their houses. Because they have their maize for their banku or they have their maize for their uh, whatever, tz or whatever. That is not our Now the prices are but almost I'm, the but same. Sadly, so for, uh, will, but I'm saying, I'm that. saying that it is because of production. If production is affected mm. and there's no much supply in the system, price will go up. It's just a demand and supply situation. But we have plenty for food and jobs. Let's, rice is one it of, is the, of the components. It is not just about planting for food rice, and jobs in MPP. Beans, it is about attitude. Maize. I'm speaking to. Come on. I'm not speaking come to on. policy. Come on. Rice, beans, maize, soya. Mm -hmm. They are all in planting for food and jobs. Yeah. We invest money mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. Since we started in 2017, mm -hmm. are we suggesting that we have not been able to build capacity enough to be able to answer this conundrum? We are the last time us? I checked on this, your set. This TV3, as a result of planting for food and jobs, I was here with Kwame Abuja, mm. who said that it was just, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 I don't know why, how you call it, production, um, a bumper harvest. Mm. But see, I said no, it was deliberate. The policy brought about subsidized, subsidized uh, fertilizer, mm. which hitherto wasn't there, okay? The policy brought about ensuring that people who could not even afford mm. to get fertilizer, had the chance of getting it. Mm. So the policy also brought about getting tractors 
mm. okay, given to them on loans. Mm. The policy brought about other farm implements and all that. So I said that, look, yes, it could be bumper harvest you can attribute it mm. to, but it is because there was a policy in place to ensure that agri inputs were also given that to farmers. That was one season. That, that, Following that, what season. happened? I have seen... Uh, we our, brought that story. We covered that Yes, story. I saw it. And I'm from, saying from that the BC. last time I checked from, here, from the last time I checked here, yes. we sat here, mm. and as a result of planting for food and jobs, mm. which we want to sit here today mm. to poo-poo mm. in a way, Okay, we got this bumper harvest, or we got come farmers. On. That was come, come on. on. That was in right? twenty nineteen, and it was Christopher Mwaku who did and that immediately story. Immediately after twenty nineteen, twenty twenty one happened. Can I, can I ask my question? Christopher Mwaku did that in twenty nineteen. I think Larry also did one yeah. for Maze, yeah. right? Yeah. And I remember that I sat in front of the president yeah. at the Jubilee House mm -hmm. on the nineteenth, twentieth of December, twenty nineteen, where the president directed that going forward. All refreshments paid with state funds, either with the uh, Jubilee House itself or municipality, district, assembly, region. She go local. Local rice. Are you able to tell me since 2019 if we have been able to stick to that and how that has reduced our rice imports? I am unable to tell you because I have not checked and I have not monitored since. But our rice imports have gone up. I'm saying since that, that time. I am unable to tell you. But at least what is good is that there has been a call for all of us to at least beyond the, to. beyond the call there should and have been action I am, I am rice imports have increased the since call, 2019 beyond the call you who is also a journalist mm. your job is to ensure that you trumpet it and drum home and investigate my job then, look, my job my job, job is my job first of all was to bring to the fore mm -hmm. that there was that uh, rice glut which the president lashed on to make that policy. Mm -hmm. So I have told my story. Mm -hmm. After I told the story. So you go to sleep no, after the story? No, I've told the story. So you go to sleep? So where's the policy document so guiding? No, where's the policy document guiding that announcement that was made? You just said that. Where is it? Look, listen to the question you <laughs> You don't even have figures listen to prove to it. You want to put oh, it back on my us. My brother, you have said I'm not putting it back to you. You're putting it back on us. Your job is a going concern. Have you, seized, have you stopped being a host on TV3 mm -hmm. since you did that work? No. Have you stopped being a journalist since you did that? And I've no. asked that question. I am saying mm -hmm. you haven't stopped being a journalist since then. You are the night. You are still a journalist. Come on. And I'm saying that. Come on, you are the night government person. You come on, hold on. Good. Come on. You are the night government person mm -hmm. I've asked this question. Yeah. You are all quick to say there was bumper harvest, there was rice glass, there yeah. was this. But you are not able to tell me how that policy announcement by the president, mm -hmm. which document we have not seen, has reduced our rice importation. Why? If, 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 None of if you. you have been mandated mm. by our constitution to work and work well for the benefit and betterment of Mother Ghana, nothing stops my good brother Johnny Hughes mm. to say that, look, I have pushed and there's been a policy announcement or a policy in place. Mm. I am going to track it until it's, it's logical conclusion. Mm. Nothing stops you from doing that. Oh. But do something better so for Mother Ghana. So we should be asking. Do something you, better for Mother Ghana. Continue to do that. You will but be telling let, us. Let me, let me have the conversation here. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that Johnny... Some of these measures are taken mm. to ensure that at least we get out of a certain quagmire. Mm. In this case, this idea of inflation going up, in this case, prices going up, mm. in this case, production going down, and investment also being discouraged by government, so that at least government could be able to raise some revenue mm. as a result, as it were. But I'm also saying that, look, we are running an economy where we want to say that everything must be on government, mm. but we also have a responsibility as a people. And that responsibility is to ensure that at least we should be mindful of the fact that we have an economy that is more or less, if you like, uh, an import-based economy. Mm. What can we do to change it? You and I and all that. So the examples I was giving was that in our clothing, mm. in our way of eating, mm. in our way of life, do we patronize what is made in Ghana properly? Mm. And if we do, all the monies and the dollars that we change to take it out and then import in even toothpick, which we continue to do, every, say, every day, Mm. Oh, stop. Okay? Until we are able to do this, it will be a problem. But me, I have always maintained that, look, the honors lies on us as a government. And, of course, we are in power. It lies on us to look Ghanaians in the face, make it that bold announcement and say that, look, we are in the tentative in six months to see how we are going to go about it, banning importation of imported okay. rice or banning okay. importation of frozen uh, chicken mm. or banning importation of frozen fish. Mm. Yes, or limit it. If, for example, we're bringing two tons, two metric tons, mm. then we say, okay, government says we are reducing it to one metric ton because of fear of shortage. Then maybe the other six months will say, okay, we are reducing to half of a metric ton or as it were. Gradually we'll get there. But if we cannot do it, and we keep on throwing our hands in despair mm. and keep on coming to discuss all these matters 
day in and day out, mm. then I think I'm afraid. Have you Ghana discussed this with our Greek minister and the trade minister? I have not. But I've, I've got this a platform, and I believe that some of us are listening. Mm. And I'm a citizen of Ghana, and I'm, I'm, I have an opinion. My opinion is that let us advocate for what is made in Ghana. Mm. That is the only way we can save our economy. It is not NDC. It is not MPP. Mm. It is our attitude that must change. Mm. It's an attitudinal problem. That's mm. what it is. You know why I ask you that? You are saying we should go and ask. We should not say it here. But mm -hmm. you are saying it here. You won't go and tell oh. Alan Chairman thing and Dr. Kutu. Oh, no. You see, you see I, sometimes, sometimes Same we don't Same respect principle. you, my good brother. It appears we are reducing the discussion to individualism. It's not. It's, it's not, not so. It's not. Let us not reduce it's it. A platform. You, have, it's a platform. you have a very huge platform right. here. Which platform is respected, right. as it were. Right. And I'm saying that if you call on my brother, Jantua, to come and sit here, exactly. call on me to come, right. my uncle, brother, to come and then have a contribution, <laughs> you brother. are telling him or you are telling us that we should have a national conversation on the matter. Mm. That is why you have given us. Mm. So this platform, not even going to Alan Chiramante or not even going to um, um, a great minister or not mm. even going to the president himself, could be a vehicle to convey okay. some of these messages to them. So when I say it here, it is okay too, right? Well, it is okay. okay. It is when you right. say it without mischief. Okay. <laughs> That'll be fine. Come on, dude. No, when you say Fred, without mischief, that's fine. The, <clears throat> the policy rate has is, is gone up again. It means that the more for business people like you, uh, if you're going to borrow, you, you will see purpose more. Um, but Kamal says we need to eat what we grow, grow what we eat, uh, be local enough, bring inflation down, and that's the solution. What do you say? Well, Jenny, thank you very much. And uh, let me say good morning to our church viewers. And you're very safe. I've not seen you in a while. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jantua, uh, Kamadi, I haven't seen you in a while. And my regards to the people of Star. Right. But it has become a republic on itself. But we'll keep on waiting. Uh, what is public policy? It is what government chooses to do or not to do. The only reason why Ghanaians on an election day mm -hmm. will file up to vote for a person is because when we leave everything to alone, they can't do it. And so what we do, we give our sovereignty, our resources, we entrust all those things in the hands of one man, add institutions to it, and say, come and regulate the activities in the society Mm. for our betterment. If we come and sit on this set mm. and we blame Ghanaians, oh, it's the taste of Ghanaians. It's our attitude. Mm. We don't patronize made in Ghana tents. You know, we are buying everything from abroad. These decisions must be policy informed. Mm. Government can say we are cutting down importation of rice mm. just by a policy. Money that you advance to uh, rice farmers bring the interest rate down mm. so that more people can assess their money, increase the taxes that they pay mm. for the importation so that the price of the local rice is far, far cheaper than the imported rice. Ghanaians will be compelled by the economic circumstances to naturally go for the cheaper one, mm. which is equally good. Easier said than done. I'm saying that it's a policy <laughs> decision. Yeah. It is yes, a policy mm. decision. If you say it's easier said than done, and so you will not do anything. They will bring in the foreign one that is cheaper than the local one. And so because of economic conditions, people then will be compelled to go for the what? Mm. The foreign one. Mm. If you go and bring a simple device into <coughs> this country that you want to manufacture toothpick mm. and cost of electricity, cost of labor, even the place to site the, 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 the factory is so high. By the time you produce maybe just a bottle of the, 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 the whatever toothpick, right. toothpick that you are producing, you will notice that the price locally will be far higher than that we come from abroad. The consumer is a rational person. They will always want to go, go in for the cheapest option mm -hmm. to the extent that the quality is the same. And so all this that you are talking about, about Ghanaians, our taste, our interest, we can't blame it on is it, is it Is it not for the same reason that the government decided that 43 items on the benchmark value, sugar, rice, oil, all those things, were going to be scrapped? Then you had the importers, exporters, Guta, all those people said, no, no, no. Yeah. If you take it off, we will be in trouble. Our business is blah, blah, blah. So, Johnny. so we, want, we want some, some independence to keep our city strong and to keep inflation down, to keep the policy rate down, lending rate down. 
but we don't want to swallow the bitter pill. Johnny, you as a government, you have been given the powers to control and regulate activities in the country. And you have noticed that if you continue importing everything in this country, it is going to affect our currency. Mm. It is going to cause the currency to depreciate. It's going to affect our lives. Mm. And so you want to bring about some improvement. What do you do? You engage your stakeholders. Mm. If you can assure this, Guta, the people will pray within that ambience. That Listen, what we are going to do is that we are going to support you to buy these same products from the local market mm. because we are going to inject some capital into the production of those things locally. We are going to subsidize the cost of it. So you don't need to go to China, you don't need to go to Turkey, you don't need to travel out there. You can still buy from here and still make your money. They will cooperate with you. Now, I remember along the line, this was in power, during the Ministry of, uh, the ministry of Agriculture. We came up with a policy okay. that says that all poultry products, mm -hmm. a certain percentage, 40 or 45 percent, must be bought locally. Mm -hmm. And then you can buy the rice and the rest from abroad. Mm -hmm. We engage all those who are into... You know, those who are in that sector, those who are selling poultry products. We had a conversation with them. So go to Doma, go to anywhere in the Bonham Harvard Center where they produce poultry. Go and buy the local 40% from them. Then you can bring your sister from abroad. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. That these things are policy informed. You can't just say it and you leave it like but, that. But Fred, you, you need to put some measures in mm -hmm. place so that those who are working in that environment mm -hmm. also will feel caution, also will feel satisfied. Okay. The policy that the government has introduced, mm. it is not meant to kill our business, mm. but it is meant to help the entire economy. For, for, you, for you, Fred, as a farmer, how do you see government's policy, for example, planting for food and jobs, subsidized fertilizer by 15%? Um, 50%. 15. 5 0. 15. Uh, it's there. You see? How, how, do you, how do you see yourself in that picture, in terms of how much you invest, what you harvest? How you even sell it at the farm gates, you know, and how you break either even break even or make profit. How do you, you see, see yourself in the, in the picture? Johnny, when it comes to agriculture, and especially this program of uh, planting for food and jobs, right. the concept, brilliant concept, I have a major problem with the implementation. What's your problem? If, for instance, I'm planting plantain, mm. all right, a biennial crop, it takes me two years to take care of plantain. Government has subsidized, maybe you give me some fertilizers or whatever that you give me. I've produced plantain. One, I don't have market for it. Two, to even cut the plantain from the farm to the market center is a problem. Mm. I don't have storage facilities. So at a particular season, you have so much plantain in the market, nobody's even buying it, it is going bad. So I take about maybe 100 Ghana cities in taking care of one plantain plant, just for the, the right. for anal analogy. Anal analogy. That's 100 Ghana to take care of a plantain plant for two years. Mm. Then I'll go and harvest that plantain and sell it for two cities, three cities. Mm. Which type of business is that? Who will be interested in going to farming? I am saying that this planting for food program is supposed to be a chain. And until we satisfy all the conditions, mm. we are not going to realize what, what, anything. What is this chain? We are still talking about story facilities. Right. I'm aware the Ministry of Agriculture is building some sorry facilities. Warehouses. Warehouse. How many of those do we have? Now, the kind of warehouses that we are building, do we have those that can keep the perishables? Okay. So, for instance, people are producing tomatoes, they are producing pepper, okra, and all these vegetables. Do we have a system where we can also preserve those? Right. Or the focus is only on cereals? And tubers. And tubers. So, what happened to these other people? So, is there any surprise that you travel around the uh, a down road mm -hmm. and you see tomatoes rotting tomatoes away. You see watermelon, watermelon rotting right. away. And mango. Mango rotting away on the Dodowa stretch. What have we put in place to be able to preserve this, to motivate a young person to go and, to go and do that thing? Planting for food and job, our land tenure system, Johnny, to acquire land and go into farming is a major issue. Do we have a system where through the local assembly system or the government, they mm -hmm. can move in and say, okay, let's negotiate with the landowners. Let's negotiate with the chiefs. We have gotten some parcel of land. You are young and you have to invest, you want to go into farming. Come, we give you five acres. Mm -hmm. You have one uh, pickup. Uh, what is the name? Bank of uh, ADB. Mm -hmm. They are supposed to facilitate money for the purpose of agriculture activities. Go back to the bank and see what is happening over there. You submit an application. Maybe you want money now for maize farming. We are doing rain-fed agriculture. Mm -hmm. 
And so by now, it should be doing some planting. Right. By the time your loan is approved, maybe your loan is approved around November. The season is over. The season is over. And so you get the money, you don't even know what to use the money for. So you see people go and take loans, made for the purpose of agriculture activities, and they'll divert the money into other things. So it's as if some of the persons who even man these institutions, mm. because practically they are not involved in tilting the, uh, the, the earth and understand how the thing happens, the, the whole thing is not really working well. When you start, well, um, we used to have state farms. The Dr. Nkrumah had state farms. Uh, and where do you stand? State farms, sh should they be brought back? Or should we have a stronger policy regime that encourages private commercial farming? Where do you stand? I, I think that we can do both. I think we can do both. We still need the state farms where government is not solely looking at profit, but it wants to stabilize the system. The government's core reason for great agriculture will not be profit driven. Right. Now, the private thing we can do is to have the assembly, uh, if the assembly. Mm -hmm. I have said, for instance, if I go to my SA area and I know that the main economic agriculture activity over there is rice farming, the assembly should be able to partner a private person mm -hmm. so that an assembly has a percentage of whatever investment mm -hmm. that they do in the rice farming. Some 30%, 20%, 40% go to the assembly. The private person who brings in his capital or who brings in his expertise mm -hmm. also takes a percentage. So I, I think that we should look at both. Mm. If we leave agriculture solely in the hands of the private sector and the government refuses mm. to play its role, i.e. providing the needed capital right. for people to go into agriculture, mm. it becomes very problematic. Okay. Now, Johnny, even R processing mm. of agriculture produce is a major issue. We all talk about it. What mechanism have we put in place? Some of the processed, uh, processed plants, we don't need huge plants. Mm. A very simple plant on a farm that you can harvest your plantain and process it there and there. These things, how do you get money to do it? And so I'm saying that cost of doing business in Ghana is so, so, so high. It's very worrying to the business community to hear this morning that the policy rate at the Bank of Ghana is going up by up to about 24%. Yeah. Once it goes up, it will affect interest rates. Interest rate too is going to go up. Mm. Lending rates and everything is going to go up. So what happens to the, the, the farmer? So I think okay. that it's a major issue that we all need to look at. Mm. Bank of Ghana cannot be telling us that, oh, inflation, because of inflation, they are going to raise uh, 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 the, the, the uh, uh, policy rates. Right. They'll keep uh, raising it so long as inflation goes up. But it's as if what we see today, we don't have control over inflation. The only reason why maybe it is not moving very fast today, or now as we speak, is because the rates are in, we are getting a lot of uh, full staff. By the time we hit November, December, that we are not getting food from our, our, our farms, mm. that we have to start importation. Inflation will go up again. That's not so even, that, that, what happens to that's us? That's not even my concern. Are we storing enough for next How year? How much the are we storing in the first quarter place? of next year? Are if, we storing enough? If you are a farmer, you would be thinking about it because you literally have a two, friend, a friend you have two seasons. He's yeah. watching and listening to Fred. He mm. says, look, a friend of his in Nigeria is advocating, and in fact, not just advocating, but building coal hubs. Okay, for storage so, of with solar panels, storage for perishable goods. We need those things. We, look, you go, just travel around on, on our routes mm. and see how our things perish. You mentioned yeah, yeah, perish yeah. We are not doing anything about it. On my way to a small, small investment, we can even do it. Small, small investment. But yet, we do So, it's the banks that are going to give you the facility to do it. And you go and take their loan. By the time you finish paying the money, is gone. You have to go and sell your property. But if you have, if you, you, go you to have, man, they tell you go and be collateral, go and build a house, go and build it. Do you have that collateral? That young man you, who is going to agriculture. If you have a bank manager who doesn't understand that the gestation period for palm <laughs> plantation <laughs> is thirty six uh, months, you know, and he gives you loan and he says come and pay back in twelve months. In twelve months, when the fruit has not ripe for you to sell. <laughs> but, but, but you know, what? does not, he understand that you're just the bank manager before he comes in? The told is that sometimes you even go for the money. Mm. The next moment after getting a loan that's mm. our attitude again yeah. the man gets a loan and he's looking for a tundra to buy no but see fred explains something and he's looking for <laughs> after he gets a product to buy he's just going to no no but, no but he's fred is not the person no. and using it see fred explains something <laughs> it's raining yeah or it's about to rain i apply for a loan to plant for the rainy season mm. i don't get the loan season ends that's when my money drops it's like we do for students loan yeah when the semester ends, that's when your money comes. What do you use it so for? So the entire system is paused. Oh. It's really well, 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 yeah. uh, what, what, what do you say? The Bank of Ghana is showing us that 
so long as inflation goes up, they will also push their thing up. And the question I ask is, this government is a capitalist government. Can there be any meaningful capitalism without capital? Uh, uh, good morning, good morning to our viewers. Yes, Let's sir. put that capitalist, socialist thing aside. I should put it aside. Yeah. Because any government that comes, whether you're capitalist or socialist, you do both sides. Well, uh, is NDC not the capitalist? Well, well, Allow him, please. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm adding. Um, you I, just asked, I asked a question. Capitalist, I said, well, government being a capitalist. What is, what is your party's tradition? Uh, what? What is your party's ideology? Property owning. What is that? <laughs> Property owning. What is that? Democracy. Ah, okay. Property owning. Um, I will leave to you forever. I can tell. I can tell. Johnny. Yes, sir. One and mm -hmm. co correct me, uh, Fred. Correct me if I'm not using the right word. When Magbraja, mm. hmm? Magbraja, Magbraja yeah. falls on his back, what happens? We see his full length. No. No. When a cockroach falls on his back, mm. see how it struggles to get back, yeah. but can't get back. That's what's happening to us. Look, God didn't bless this country for nothing. It's unfortunate that we are using the commodity for negative things instead of positive things. Gold is a good commodity for hedge mm -hmm. for inflation are we not even is are we the first mm. largest producer of gold in in the world today or is it in africa in africa how have we used gold to show and hedge inflation two do we not still think mm -hmm. eh? and i must say in this fourth republic it has helped us on a much lesser degree than a higher degree, party manifestos. Mm. Party manifestos. Even governments in power in this fourth republic, sometimes they do refer to their party manifesto, what they've written, they do what they like. We need to change the structure of the economy. And the only way you can change the structure of the economy is to have a long-term national development plan, period. But that is why Professor Jan Bafo is there. He was our Minister for Planning. He's been moved there. The President spoke about Gorgeous Bergen economy. He says we will change it. <laughs> the Taxation talk, to production. talk is cheap. Let's see it on the ground. If I'm to bring the 40-year National Development Plan here and I'm right. to go through right. it. What you and your team put yes, together. If document. you see that document, fantastic. Document. And if manifestos were key to a national development plan for certain durations, within 20 years, this country would have turned around. That's true. Easily. So why can't around we do easily. that? We don't want to, because we are playing partisan politics. Why should we, Ghana, be, be our economy based on imports? Why? Why? Why aren't we looking at that? That affects the city. It increases inflation, capital flight. These three things. Why? Why aren't we looking at it? Look, we're talking about uh, traditional clothing. That's right. Wasn't it President Kufu? Yes. Who brought Friday wear? Yes. Didn't people wear it? They did. If it started from the top, mm. and it was insistent mm. that from this point on, we are wearing Ghanaian material anywhere we go. Mm. Don't the Nigerians do it? They do. When they go to World Bank and uh, IMF, mm -hmm. what do you see them wearing? I, I, I don't remember the last time I saw a Nigerian president wear a suit. Yes. Not even political yeah, suit. Yeah, that's true. Never seen. The ministers Are you the saying way. we can't do it? There's one man who, even in opposition, uh, stuck to President Kofor's idea, the Minister for Trade, Alan Tremonti. Even in opposition, you would always find him in his you know, African wear. That credit must be given to him. Have you seen the dress Cookie is wearing today? Yes. It's a combination of what? African print and that. And that. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? Bella as well. Now, the reason why I, I hope say, it's only the dress The reason why I say that, <laughs> oh, but she's a beautiful woman. Right. She's a beautiful Come woman. Out, listen, listen, listen. Let's get serious. Thank you. you see, the, what it would do, it would bring out dress designers. Yeah. And you will see the ingenuity of Ghanaian women in terms of 
sewing. Yeah. A man to the grandpa. Star, so yeah, exactly, the yeah, stars so. that took, it will yeah. open up. And apart from that, eh, it would also get a lot of employment in place. Yeah, look, yesterday I went to visit an old lady mm. who has, the last 50 years, mm. done her own prints. Oh, okay. Asha Fabrics. Ah. She's now about 88. Okay. She does it herself. Yes, yeah, she does it herself. I heard about it, but I didn't she know. She does it herself. Her wow. materials are done. She showed me all the, the, the templates that they use. Plenty templates. And she's 88 years. And she's 88 years. And one thing she does, yeah, she, yeah, she's good. got these uh, um, cloth sculptures, which, you know, she has the designs there. Mm -hmm. And she can put in a glass. And you can hang in your room. And she says, mostly foreigners come and buy. And when you see it, when I saw it, I said, wow. Are we promoting people like that? Are we pro do we do we actually go out to seek Ghanaians who can lift the economy out of certain challenges? But, but that, that's no. why one district one factory is there. Look, do we look do we look out for people like that? One one district one factory, as I always say, one district one factory should have started with those commodities where we have massive capital flights for the first four years. The rice of this world, the sugars of this world, the juice sacks of this world. Go into it. Make sure you've got the factories in place so that at least we reduce the capital flight of imports of these things. Mm -hmm. Did we do it? Did we do it? And so the Bank of Ghana has no choice but to do what? To raise as inflation goes up. But, and, but and, that, that's going to and inflation, derail well, our but, infla but inflation, has, inflation has got to do with increased prices where people's salaries are reduced because of increased prices. So how do we bring it down? That is why drastic measures should be taken. Mm. Rice, eh? mm. I agree with what Kamal said. If we are bringing in 20 tons of rice, mm -hmm. we reduce it significantly to five. Right. What does that do? It pushes people to work. It opens up the economy. And then what, what, the, the thing is that even to get the youth into farming, give incentives. But, but now the Let subsidized see, fertilizer is not there. Uh, look, they can't find it. Wait, you wait, 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 wait. What do they tell us? I mean, the oil and gas industry. Right. We have huge deposits of gas. From this point on, shouldn't we be looking at fertilizer? Shouldn't we be looking at what Ukraine, Ukraine does? Because of the Russian-Ukraine war, everybody is suffering because of fertilizer. Are you saying we cannot do it? Take advantage of it now. Not, we cannot do it. Those things that Ukraine is showing us, let's take advantage of it. We are talking let's nation, start. All of us. Apart from that, you we see, apart, apart from it's that, it's not, a question, no it's not a question of oh, no. a party. The president, when he went to... Uh, uh, Kumase mm. Menshia, mm. he said Galamse is uh, everybody's fight. Yes. Show us that is everybody's fight. Push people to come on board. Just don't open it up. You are the leader. Show us. Show us how it should be done. And people will follow. Or maybe you went alive. Maybe you went born. Or you feed yourself. Yeah. When you feed yourself yeah. started. Come and see. We, we all carried corn. Everybody was inside. So it's a leadership thing. Once the leadership puts its foot down, mm. people will follow. Okay, we'll Johnny, see you I, after I, the break. I, I, One yeah, minute. Yeah, yeah. Break. yeah, yeah we'll back. see you after okay. the break. We'll come back. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back and thank you very much indeed. It's TV3 New Day and uh, many thanks indeed for your time. Keep sending your messages. We'll get to read them. And uh, if it's your birthday, happy, happy birthday to you. My guest in studio, Kamal Dean Abdullahi, here is a Deputy National Communications Director of the New Patriotic Party. He's also been a former National Nasara Coordinator of the NPP. Lawyer Kwame Jantua is the head of the CPP's political affairs, a private legal practitioner. He also works uh, actively within the energy sector. And Fred Agbanyo is um, a former communications officer of the NDC. He is also presently a Deputy International Relations uh, boss of the NDC, and he has his eyes on Santo Kofi Akbafu Likpe and Lolobi uh, parliamentary seat. Fred. Johnny, thank you very much. So I think that all of us are saying the same thing on the subject we discussed earlier, that there must be a paradigm shift. Mm. 
we can't continue doing the same old things and expecting a new result. Mm -hmm. Our approach and attitude in this country is problematic. And for me, we can't put that blame on the citizenry. Mm -hmm. That is why we always put a leadership in place. Okay. And so that leadership must lead the charts. Mm. There must be people who, 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 are people who are leading the people. That is the direction we are going. We want us to consume what we produce in Ghana. We want us to wear made in Ghana things. Back in the days of our servant, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, they were wearing these smocks and the rest. Jerry Jorales came, he was wearing smoke and putting on a long sleeve. President Kufuor came, we moved a, a, a notch higher. Mm. What has happened to all of us? Now, the sad thing is that go and find out those who are doing this local fabrics and those who are sewing. Go and compare the price to a dress that is coming from overseas. Mm. How many times have we not heard people complain about this Chinese now printing our fabrics? Right. And go and check the cost. So the problem really is about the cost. And that's what I'm saying that we can only use policy mm. to prevent some of these things. But, but you see, uh, again, some Fred, protectionism. Fred, you see, so for example, what Mr. Jantua is wearing mm. is GTP. Mm. And I know this because I've worked with GTP before. Mm. Ghana's most beautiful. Mm. What he spoke about, Cookie, merging uh, local prints with you know, other stuff. Grandpa does that, Sona does that for me. The concern is what they call, for example, high target, which comes through our ports. Anyway, when you have customs, you have uh, what it's do you cheap call it? Prints from China, and national have security. Them to come. Yeah. You have CID. You have all those people at the ports. How do they get in here? My brother, that is what I'm saying. That you can't blame. You some, can't blame the citizenry. We have to blame leadership. They use the port. They use on approved route. But people are manning all these areas. People are supposed to check all these things. Right. And, and we pay we people buy. to do it. Yes, right. we buy. Right. Right. Because right. it's cheaper. Right. Let me ask you a question. Are we patriotic enough in this country? Why are we not patriotic? Uh, uh, no. As, as, if we're we are not. Listen, if we're patriotic Why are enough, we not? Things coming through the port. Mm. Escalators. Mm. Mm. Galamse. Right. Coming through the port. Are you saying that we won't be able to target and find where it's going? Mm. It's it's right. the, the point is we that put money on top of see, everything. Mm. Yes, the that's moment the, you put oh, money on top of that's everything, that's the point. Right. That's a when problem. if you that's see the wrong thing in our society to then you that's raise it, problem. you become the target. You know, and, you, and know you know, you know what, what, what Lajantua is wearing. When you go to Makola today, now mm. they will say this is GTP. This is how much it costs. Yes, and then they will tell you this is high target. This is how much it costs. It's lesser. The question I ask is. GTP has the franchise to this design. Mm. So how did those producing the high target get Imitation. 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 How did they get it? And you see, it even has carcinogens. So the more it stays yes. on your skin, the more, it the yeah. more cancerous yeah. it is in your health. Imitation. I see, our, it's just how to control our import-based economy. I, I, I don't know. And I think the GRA, in we this case, customs, have it. what to do. You mm. see... You see, you okay. use you price, know use taxation. Fred, you know something. You get it right. Fred, you know something. Mm. Because when these things happen, those who are supposed to check still stay in office. They don't sack them. They feel it's a free Even when they all. check. Look, you know what? Let me tell you. Yeah. If, I, if, I, I if you start you. sacking people, mm. you will see people will sit You know, I'll lose my job if I don't do the right thing. Mm. They would stop. As you rightly said, we, 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 we are, are not patriotic as we are supposed to be. Johnny. Nobody cares. Mm. Because we leadership cares. leadership has no sure given us a cause to be patriotic. Because go and find out. See, this rice issue that we were talking about earlier, if you know the cabal involved in rice importation, mm -hmm. and those who are benefiting from it, the political you parties, you have no idea. The political parties. So you are going for an election. That's the point I was saying. You are going for an election. My brother is going for an election. And these guys will come and bring you all the money. The next one, baby, you are the Minister of Trade. Do you have the boss now to say you, you are implementing policies that will affect their businesses? Let me ask you a question. That's the problem we have in the country. Let me ask you a question. Mm. The president goes out there. He brings Volkswagen in here. Right. He brings Citroen in here. He brings Nissan in mm. here. He brings what other car company? Uh, Toyota. Toyota. Toyota yeah. in here. We have started our own country. Mm. Shouldn't it start from there? Should the president say, right now, we are producing a particular mm. vehicle called Kantanka. Kantanka. We need more. Let's see how we build Kantanka before we bring others in. Good and even that. these companies you're bringing in, don't you tell them, we have a local manufacturer in Ghana. Partner him. Partner him. Yes. That's how you build it. Anybody today coming into this country, you want cocoa, you want gold, you want refine here first. Mm. Otherwise, go away.
I know that I know that Kantanka made Johnny. some donations to I think the Ghana police, Ghana the police minister for Ghana. finance or somebody yeah. like that. It but, goes to show you know, it's top, but, top, but, top has but, to do but, the right but, thing. But then again, some people have also said, look, the people who are pushing Kantanka to us, they themselves drive under under brands of yeah, cars. Exactly. Yeah. The people exactly. who are and manufacturing Kantanka, yeah. they drive other brands. If we can so tell if you all believe, the ministers, if you believe, it, if you believe in if what you produce, the you should be driving in it. Johnny, we, we, if you can tell all the ministers and government institutions that forty percent of the cars you procure get them from Kantaka. Kantaka, come. This is money for this alone for you. For the next twenty years, take this money. No, I think they are ten years. Ten no, no, years. No, no, that's holiday or so. Before you even do that, before you even do that, you go into Kantanka. And look at their cost structure. Right. See that cost structure can be affordable. And if it can't be affordable, help work with them to get an affordable cost structure. That's right. And then push it in there. Johnny, um, big things come out of um, small things. Right. And I agree with Gentle uh, Gentle the more when he says that look, we should have looked within to empower the smaller companies mm. to become big even though it will take some time for us to do it. Right. We should be strategic <laughs> about it. I agree perfectly. But I also want to say that, look, I am repeating what I keep on saying, mm -hmm. that if our attitude and our well-view as a people doesn't change, then it will be difficult for us to see the change that we want to have. Our well-view is a problem. Mm -hmm. Johnny, all this we are saying here, somebody <laughs> is sitting somewhere saying that we are making noise. Huh. I'm telling you. That person is sitting somewhere saying that we're making noise. We all this we're saying that here too, if we do not fight poverty head on, mm. we can also succeed. But where do we start from? You see, we start from, first of all, orientation. We all agree, from Nima to my village in Zao to Nyoko to Nantong and to all those areas, we all say that, look, anything Ghana is what I'm going to buy. Bring anything foreign, it will be sitting on that shelf. As soon as we start that, then policy, of course, is supposed to be enhanced. When policy is also enhanced, mm. I agree with him mm. when he says leadership must show the way. I perfectly agree. Mm. And must be consistent, not just showing the way. Mm. When you come to say you are fighting this, do it. Then the other bigger problem mm. is the polarization of our system. Media houses today choose to support the party they want to support. Mm. When, in fact, they're supposed to be fair and firm. Mm. But you okay? politicians now fear. own radio and TV stations. That's what I'm saying. How do you expect the <laughs> media can, people? Uh, that's what I'm saying. You own radio so and TV stations. When you take, say, for example, the, you, have, you have party chairmen <laughs> who own stations, yeah, you right? Have media general, for example, and you have party people mm. who maybe will say, we are part of the shareholders. Mm. And they decide. We, we, you have, I'm we, not saying we media are, general, for example. Right. I'm not saying they have. Right. But I'm saying that you may have media general mm. where you have somebody who is a shareholder. You use a practical a example. The practical then examples you can also of use, people. You may have Radio Gold mm. where you have a politician who owns it. Mm. You may have Oman where you have a politician owning it. You may have Ahoto, mm. all of them. The but problem is that they don't so, so, in America. So, so should, in should, should the politicians take their hands off the media? Should the politicians take their hands off the media? Fred, Fred, hold on. Should the politicians take their hands off the media? Because you, you're talking about polarization. You're talking about the role of the media. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that you there said. are key political actors in this country, on both sides, who own media houses. Yeah. Is it time for them to keep their hands off the media? You see, the people are supposed to be informed. People are supposed to be educated. If a politician has money to set it up, that's why there are ethics mm. in terms of content. That politician must do the needful mm. by ensuring that at least, yes, you have had the money, you have set it up, but ethically, this is how things are supposed to run. Kamal, does it but happen? unfortunately, does no, it happen? I'm saying, I'm making a point. Does it happen? Unfortunately, that's not, that doesn't happen. Does it happen? So I am saying, we even so have, a, we have, from a, having we have, we have, we have, we have, we have a polarized media environment. So we should politicians take their hands we off? We cannot help ourselves. Politics is too much. Look at the Galapagos. Should the politicians take their hands off? President says, go and burn excavators mm. to do what? To, 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 to serve as deterrent. Mm. Then NDC will come and say, no, why are you burning But come on, you have not answered my question. Come on, hold on. Come on, you have not answered my question. Should politicians take their hands off the press? I, why? The politicians are not supposed to even be doing that for us. Okay. Clearly, I think that, well, but just that when you look at the licensing regime mm. of press media houses, it is not clear whether politicians are supposed to have it or not to have it. It's not clear. But what we are saying now is opinion, opinion we are throwing out. Mm. 
for me clearly to fight that polarization in the media environment then of course politicians to stay off setting up okay come out do you know one other but, thing before I, you yeah, know, i'll give you yeah, your minute each okay. there's one other thing which is of concern to me yeah that for example i've seen as a, as a characteristic of this government president vice president they announce policies off the cuff and we don't follow it up with the document. I, 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 so, for example, this rice glut, this maize glut, this plantain glut that we had, there is no document to say that, look, this is your handbook as a minister. If you have refreshment for Christmas, refer to the handbook, use local rice. There's no, I sat in front of the president. He mentioned that. But I can tell you, most ministries, departments, and agencies don't follow that. The last time, the last time I was in a plane traveling, then a gentleman was sitting by me, and he was like, "What do I think about ministers and how they are appointed?" Right. Then I said, "It's excellent. The president has a right to choose whatever he wants to choose. But in my view, mm. if you are choosing a minister, don't go bookish. That's mm. one. Right. Just the fact that somebody book is a long, doctor or long. a PhD mm. person, okay." It's, it's enough for you to say he can handle it. Secondly, mm. I want every single minister, before even I announce you, I am giving you maybe, say, for example, um, Environment Ministry. Mm. Get me a blueprint. That's mm. right. This is what we have. I, I want you to go by the blueprint. Based on that blueprint, I will then announce your name, mm. and then I'm going to uh, checklist you okay. on whatever I, blueprint I, I you have brought. Right, right. Then by the time you give me three, four, six months, mm. you have shown me that indeed you've assisted That's me. So as a president, show working and, and show your scorecard. Show working and show your scorecard. That's my story for me. That's saying my story for me. Show working, show your scorecard. Quickly, take your take your one minute. I agree. I said that and I was insulted. Show working, show your scorecard. I, I, I agree. Quickly, quickly, we have to go. Our time I is agree up. perfectly that like people must show, people must demonstrate that when they are given their job, they can do it. I will must do this, I will do that, I will do that. that. If you make me a Greek minister, I can do A, B, C, D, E, F. Mm -hmm. And methodology and that I'm going to apply. Okay. Once you're able to show the methodology, okay. you're able to go. Right. Last one, last one. Right. I, I know, I'll I'll our time is finished. Last, is finished. last one that mm -hmm. can mention about this burning of excavators, right. and for me, so that I say, is the most useless way of approaching this issue. Why do you have to burn excavators when our roads are bad? Why do you have to benefit excavators when you can do these assemblies? Mm -hmm. It will benefit. Okay. Why do you have to benefit excavators when we have to go and fill the pits that they are digging? Okay. Who's excavators Thank you. To fill the pizza? Like that that you have the final word. Open it. You, you can only do what you are saying if you have a long term plan. policy. That's all. Long term plan. Yes, because you tell them this is the plan. Show me how you are going to fit into this plan. If you don't have the plan, then as president, you put your people around the table and say, this is where we are going. Show me how you can add to it. Simple. Simple. And then, and then, when you bring the person, give us a reason why you have brought that person. Mm. And when that person defaults, give us a reason why you have sacked that person. Mm. What does it bring? It brings transparency, it brings accountability, and it gives the president more gravitas mm. where the people are following him. Thank you. Like Kwame Janto is the head of the CPP's Political CCS Affairs CCS Committee. Yeah. He's also a private legal practitioner. He works within the energy sector. Fred Agbenyo is the deputy head of international relations of the National Democratic Congress. He wants to be MP one day for Satokofi Akpafuli and Lolobi. And Kamal Din Abdullah is a former national Nasara coordinator of the NPP. He is presently Deputy Communications, uh, Deputy National Communications Director. He also has eyes on what Nanto, right? Um, okay. So we'll see you after the break. I've been saying this here, and I'm happy that today has been endorsed. Show working, show your scorecard. I remember in 2017, the president called Mr. A and says, this is his CV, this is what I want him to go and do. So it was easy for us to check them. In 2020 and 2021, that was not done. So it's difficult for us to even measure the ministers by what they have done and what they can do. But we day inside. We'll see you after the break.